Start with a floor with parallel lines that are equally spaced out. Let's randomly throw some needles onto this floor. We will keep count of the total number of needles thrown and the number of needles that crosses one of these lines. We will also keep track of the total number of needles divided by the total number of hits, or 1 divided by the probability of a needle crossing a line. Fast forward to a total of 100, 1000, and 10,000. Notice how this value seems like it is approaching pi. This may seem like a coincidence, but it actually is a legitimate way to approximate pi using probability called Buffon's needle. I find it fascinating that something as random as dropping needles onto the floor can be used to approximate pi. So why does pi show up here? Let's say the distance between the two lines is 2h, and the length of our needle is half that length. Define d as the distance between the centre of our needle and the closest line. d is a value between 0 and h, as we are only concerned about the closest line. Next, we will draw a horizontal line passing through the centre of our needle, and define theta as the angle of rotation between our needle and the horizontal line. Notice that theta is a value between 0 and pi, as that covers all the possible orientations of our needle. In fact, we can reduce this range to 0 to pi over 2, as all the calculations down the line can just be reflected. Draw a vertical line from the end of the needle to the horizontal. We will define this length as x. Notice that the line is crossed when d is less than or equal to x. Remember, the length of the needle is h, so the length of this hypotenuse is h over 2. By using trigonometry, x is equal to h over 2 sine theta. And this means the needle crosses the line when d is less than or equal to h over 2 sine theta. This outcome can be visualised on a set of axes, where the vertical axis represents d. Remember, d is a value between 0 and h. The horizontal axis will represent theta. where theta is a value between 0 and pi. This rectangle represents all the possible combinations of d and theta. Next, we'll draw the function d is equal to h over 2 sine theta. Notice that as we go along this function, the needle just touches the line. And this makes sense as we just calculated that the needle crosses the line when d is less than or equal to h over 2 sine theta.
In other words, this shaded region represents all the combinations of D and theta where the needle crosses the line. And anywhere outside this region is where the needle does not cross the line. From this, the probability of a needle crossing the line is equal to the area of the shaded region under this function divided by the area of the rectangle. This area can be found by evaluating the integral of h over 2 sine theta between 0 and pi. And the area of the rectangle is just length times height. So the probability is equal to 1 over pi. Therefore, 1 divided by this probability is pi. This is why the total number of needles divided by the number of hits approaches pi. The issue with this approach in approximating pi is that it relies on probability and chance. For the 10,000 needle test, I had to repeat this simulation about 10 times to get this value. And for the 100,000 test, I had to repeat this almost 50 times to get this value. One way to mitigate this issue is to increase the number of needles that we use. So I did what any normal person would do and repeated the 100,000 test 100 times and took the average to see how close we can get to pi.